Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever it is, wherever you are. What just stuck in my toe? I, now my thumb's on the... Hello, Mr. Thumb. Okay. I just stepped on a piece of wood. Or grass or straw or something from outside. I live in the fucking country. Anyways. So. I have been like many reefers when their fish get sick been obsessively scrolling scrolling and scrolling through forums on reef central and reef to reef and reef blah 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 and all kinds of different everything you can think of just i got i got so many different people's two cents i could open a fucking savings and loan okay But one question nobody can answer. And I'm going to go ahead and make this video just, just another all-in-one kind of medication spiel. Okay. We have the Paragard and we have the Prazi Pro. Okay. Now, people say that you can mix Paracard, Para, uh, Prazi Pro, that one, with malachite green, which is the active ingredient in Paragar. Okay? But, nobody knows, and they say they don't recommend it because of the polymers. There's extra ingredients in Paragar. Okay? Well, to answer your question, yes, it's working just fine. No signs of stress whatsoever. I don't know how much it's helping, but at least her uh, brocanella isn't spreading from the affected fins. As you can see, her tail's like halfway gone. Her ventral fins are halfway gone. Um, Bubbles and Zoom were eating quite well yesterday, but unfortunately today they woke. I woke up and they were both hosting Marlena. As she was shedding her slime and now their fins look a little tiny bit just 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 a little bit brittle and I did notice just the little like the first stage blazing of Brickanella on them before I pulled them so that's why I went from I was this morning just gonna change them to Prozzy Pro and just kind of exhaust my Prozzy Pro um, but I'm not entirely convinced of what kind of infection this is. Okay. This is often the case when diagnosing saltwater fish. So, if you don't know whether it's flukes or brucanella, and you don't have your metronazole or your, uh, your formalin product in yet, which I don't, and I'm also hesitant to use formalin, okay? Uh, also, metronidazole to me is, uh, you know, antibiotics are kind of like the last resort. Uh, my, my's going to get some metronidazole. But I'm hoping to clear Bubbles and Zoom up with just this. Um, and then what I want to do is kind of use the metro just to wipe out the infection at the last stage. Okay. Whereas my is probably going to get formalin for a day, then metro, and then back to paracard probably. The thing is, and you know, if you don't want to stress out your fish, you might want to follow my routines here. Um, I, I'm, I'm not doing freshwater baths. I'm doing baths in different medications. Um, I've done a couple of freshwater baths. But I do them very gently. As you can see, I, I have added a heater to top off there. When this first happened, I should have been doing the freshwater baths before I transferred them in the QT. Okay, and you should too. But I didn't have a heater for my top off water. Okay, now that I have a heater for my top off water, 
I'm dosing every gallon with fucking marine buffer to bring the pH up of the, of the top off water. Um, you should be using, okay, if you want to do it properly, as opposed to, um, you know, the quick method that, that I'm using. <coughs> you buy uh, the little freshwater pH up kit, you know, pH test and, and the little freshwater pH up bottle from API. It's, you add a certain number of drops and it raises the pH to 8 and you're good to go. Um... The thing about marine buffer is you can't add too much, so you just overdose just a little bit, and you're there. Or, you know, just dose enough, and you're there. But there's no worry of overdosing. Um, it, it balances itself out with, with, the, with the way it, the chemicals react together. Um, so. Acriflavin. Ruby uh, Reef Rally. Some people say it's snake oil. I don't know if they're using it properly. Acroflavin is really just sort of... Uh, if I was going to use it, I would use it kind of like I would normally use Prozipro in a bath in between thing. Okay. Um, Acroflavin is, is meant to get fungus and bacteria off the fish. But it's not going to eradicate it from a system, per se unless it's dosed enough to where it can turn your water colors, okay? Um, they say it's somewhat reef safe. I don't know. Same thing with uh, metronidazole. Say it's somewhat reef safe. I don't know. I'm still considering putting it in that one. I don't know. I might just put it in all the shit. I don't know. I want the shit gone, you know? I, I want the infection gone. My, my current plan, as it stands, is until May 15th, these suckers are staying in quarantine. There's going to be no fish in there. Um, once I get the Brucanella outbreak under control, uh, I'm going to try to... Put these guys, my, once, once my fins are growing back, I'm going to put them in with the new fish, hopefully. And we're going to see how well Pete and uh, Myrtle will get along. Trigger fish and a file fish. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. You don't know. We'll find out, though. We'll find out together. It'll be fun. I'll have a net standing by. <laughs> But anyways, so, old guys rule, yeah, just in case you were wondering what my stupid shirt said today, uh, this sucks, this whole thing, this whole thing very much sucks, so Seachem Paragard, I just read on here. But you're not supposed to use... Wait, wait, hold up. I've been fucking up. I've been fucking up something. Like over and over again. I've been doing it all day long. I don't know if I was... Was I neutralizing the medication or something? Stress guard... Is compatible with all medications except for those that are copper based. So, oops. Flip it around like a fucking on cocktail. I'm a bartender. Look at me. Um, no. I'd be the bartender with the broken glass all its feet. Well, this apparently is a lot like Stress Goat in that it dissolves the heavy metals, which makes sense because it's a water conditioner. Um, or is used as a water conditioner. So don't use stress guard with copper, which kind of sucks. How are you supposed to use it with the copper? Just copper, I guess. Uh, Coopermine does have its own. It has the, it has the polymers. Ah, uh, so that may be why you don't need. It. Can you use? Prime? I thought 
You can't use prime with it either. So what are you supposed to use to keep the ammonia down? Hmm. So, moral of the story is to use Cupramine and Stress Guard. You're going to have to alternate. And you have to run carbon to get the Stress Guard out before dosing more Cupramine. Okay? As opposed to, you know, usually running carbon to get the copper out. You'd run carbon and then take it out and then put more copper in. Okay. Okay. So, we have the new background in. I know my backwards facing camera's video quality isn't all that great, but I really, really like that. And here's my angle from the couch. With the 3D look to it. Oh, yes. I really like that background. Look, there's like a heater floating in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> okay. So. Formalin. Supposedly knocks the shit out. I believe it. Everybody says it knocks the shit out. Yeah, I've never used it. I'm about to. It's on the way. It should be here today or tomorrow. Hopefully, hopefully today. Um. I'm going to do carbon, I'm going to do water change, carbon on this, and then I'm going to add half a dose of that, okay, and then tomorrow I'm going to bring it up to a full dose, and now of course I need to research whether or not I can use stress guard or stress coat with formalin, I found a limit to my knowledge again, damn it! <laughs> That's what reefing is, it's like to constantly expanding your knowledge. That's what I love about this hobby, really. Like as stressful as the situation, hey, I'm still learning. I'm 40 years old, I'm still learning something new every fucking day. How about that? Uh, that ain't helping my right now. Myrtle and Smurfette don't really give a shit. Um. Marlena, look how fat and healthy she is. She's moved around a little bit today on her own volition. I don't know. Um, new theory while I'm on mandarins. Could mandarins be a carrier of Brucanella? Like, it really seemed like... Like, the mandarins were the first ones to get affected by it. And maybe it was the mandarins being stressed about it. But Larry from Petco had red by his frayed fin. Remember how we thought Mai killed Larry? I don't think Mai killed Larry. I wish I would have taken a picture of it. I'm going to see if I, I, I did. I don't think I did, though. That frayed fin on one side had red at the base, so like a reddish area. It didn't look bloody, per se. It looked like maybe the fin was kind of pulled out in like a clot form, but it didn't really look like that. It was just a reddish area. That's Brucanella. So, either that's Brucanella, or Bruce has had it all this time, suppressing it while he was well fed and when the tanks got changed and he got stressed out because his glorious buffet of copy pods was limited um, there was an outbreak that's one possibility Bruce had it and he was stressed out I'd, I'd just be interested in anybody else's observations on that um
seems to be kind of correlative. But, you know, I wasn't trying to observe that back then, so I can't be sure. Anyway, I've, I've, this isn't my first outbreak, folks, you know? <laughs> Been doing this for 30 years. Anyway, so right now we're running Prozzi Pro and Paragard successfully, simultaneously. Um, quite a heavy dosage of Paragard, too, by the way. Quite a, he quite a heavy dosage of both. Probably, probably twice what the bottle says. And the fish are fine. Anyway. The uh, bottom tank down there is still running copper. I'm going to do three days in copper with no white spots. And then I'm going to probably uh, switch back over to Paragard. Just because. Um, although I might, I might just go ahead and run copper for a full 10 days on them. Ten days is a good, good enough length of time to, to eradicate uh, ick. What they had was ick. Ick. Not brook. Ick. Not brook. Ick. Brook. Ick. Brook. Fighting two diseases at the same time. These came from saltwaterfish.com. A little bit ick. I got a fucking problem with that. Um. You know, that, that's what quarantine and medication is for. But, um, don't, don't go ordering fish off the internet and thinking you can put it in your fucking display tank. That's for sure. You should be able to get more trustworthy fish from your local fish stores. I just bought a purple tang that fucking, its guts were pinched by its pectoral fin and its fucking stomach was forced back into its mouth. I examined the purple tank. I could. I'll, we'll, we'll do a live stream one day soon, and I'll put the pictures up of that. Um, you know how she never extended her pectoral fins? Well, after she died, I went and examined them, and she had horrible, horrible markings that she was using her pectoral fins to, to kind of hold. The poor thing was in so much pain. I'm wishing I would have put her just in the reef just so she could have had a pleasant death. Because there was nothing, nothing anybody could have done for her. She was in the quarantine all by herself, just fine. Not a single white spot on her. Nothing. There's no infection that could have taken hold that quickly from here. You should have seen. It was pretty obvious the way her intestines were misaligned and the little pinch marks below her pecker. Oh, God. What are they doing to this fucking poor fish? We saw this article on this about how people are basically using this as a method to uh, revive purple tangs that they catch from the ocean. They bring up too quickly and they puke their fucking stomachs up. They don't decompress them before they bring them up. They're caught below 35 feet. And I've, I've already talked to the, the store owner about that. So we got Brookinella from Petco. We got a tortured tang from a, you know, the best local fish store in town. Huh. See why I want to open up my store? Meanwhile, Orihime did just fine until she got whatever was infesting my system. And, yeah, she did start swimming a little funny and having a little bit of bladder issues after Larry was here. Should have caught that just from the way she was swimming funny. Never going to miss that again. Um, but, see the thing with Flame Angels? You pull them out of their reef that they love... They're probably dead. They just stress so much. Flame angels are such 
peculiar fish in that way. Like, that, that's why when we were quarantining her, I was I was trying to make so much of an attempt to be social with her so, so that she wouldn't freak out every time she sees us. Um, you got to be very delicate with a flame angel fish. And, you know, my only two options were to pull apart the fucking reef tank and try to trap her. Um, or to try to get her like I got her. It wasn't too much stress as far as when I caught her. Like, you know, it didn't wind up being that difficult, but... Jeez. Saltwaterfish.com, Orihime, good fish. Not, not a supply issue there, that's for sure. And these two guys... Even with their little bit of ick from saltwaterfish.com, they're doing good. And you know, you can't be like, oh no, saltwaterfish.com shit for something with ick. You'll never buy from them again. And who are you going to buy from, man? Because everybody's going to sooner or later ship you something with ick. They might not catch it. These guys didn't show any symptoms for the first few days. See? But. That's why you got to quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. Bingo! Can you not chew your ass during the video, please? And when you quarantine, quarantine with a glass bottom so you can get it clean. The best way is to have two different tanks and transfer them every day. If you don't want to stress the fish out, you can clean the bottom of that tank, change the filter media, etc. Okay? <sighs> But yeah, my first treatment is always Paragard. Okay. On the way to the Paragard, we give them a bath in Prozipro. Now that I know they can be mixed, I might change that re re regimen up a little bit. You know, Prozipro being so expensive, using it in a little fucking receptacle bath relatively economical. Um, at this point, while I'm waiting on the formula to come in, I've mixed it just for maximum effect to try to keep my spins from disappearing even further. And it seems to have maybe worked a little. I don't know yet. Pray for my, pray for me. Thanks for watching, y'all. And uh, click the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the little notification bell. Crap like that. Do whatever you want to do. Whatever makes you happy. Forget about it.